Hi folks, welcome to the second machining video for the Rapido meter. Let's make the top piece relatively easy, but we screwed up. We learned two pretty good lessons. See if you can figure out what happened while you're watching. We'll recap at the end. Welcome to our Wednesday widget. Using our Heimer to find the quark coordinate system, which is the back left corner, and Z0 on the top. Starting off, 2D adaptive, quarter inch, four flute, lakeshore, end mill, 200 surface feet, just a hair over 3,000 RPMs, 3,000 per tooth, about 36 inches a minute, 0.06 optimal load, which is 25% of the tool, and we're doing it in 3 8 inch step downs, leaving 5,000 radial to come back. I do have smoothing turned on. Every once in a while this gets me, it hasn't happened in a while, but the adaptive will leave that center strip right down. It was light enough where I pulled it off uh, with just a pair of pliers, which isn't the best thing. You could come back with a horizontal or reduce your step over uh, to get rid of it. You can see you're making a nice chip, making a real chip. Tool ran great. As we ramp into this small hole, same tool settings, nothing changed. One big difference, under the linking tab, add a ramp taper angle and that creates a tapered ramp down that helps with chip evacuation. Same thing on the larger slot. Coming back with a 2D contour to clean that geometry up. We're opening up the little lip there, cleaning up the sidewall and the shelf. This is the, the, where we'll have the lower bar attach in, like so. That little shelf is what will act as our spreader. I used to spot like a wimp. Don't. 250 service feet a minute, plunging at 5,000 per rev, which is 20 inches a minute. Retract feed rate, bump that up, saves you a little bit of time going 40,000 below the top of the hole. One eighth inch twist drill. This will be the end of our bandsaw cut on the split bar. 125 service feet a minute, 3,000 per rev, which is 11 inches per minute, pecking in 35,000 increments. One of the things I look for when I'm using smaller drills, make sure you're making a chip that gets evacuated. I, I like to look and see that chip leave. That means it's less likely to be building up inside your flutes. Steel is actually a little easier than aluminum here because it shears or cuts better. Three sixteenths end mill to sneak in to this clearance hole for a fastener. This is what's gonna help act as our spreader or our medium adjustment. And opening up these holes, the design idea is we'll use a shoulder bolt that passes through the bottom, middle, and top piece, threading into the top piece, that'll help us take apart and reassemble this and just be a nice design touch. Quick chamfer, 300 surface feet a minute, 4,500 RPMs, 2,000 per tooth, or about 18 inches a minute, only about a tooth out, really just trying to lightly break that edge. So we need to profile this, and I thought a lot about the work holding. I thought we were gonna put it on like a mini pallet or something sacrificial, and then I realized, ooh, I think this will work. I made one mistake and it's so obvious now, but I kissed the nuts to try, try to keep them stable, but didn't indicate it in. What an amateur mistake. <clears throat> Knock test, actually feels solid. The good news is the fixture worked very well. Enough rigidity and stability to take this cut, which was the same recipe. 200 surface feet a minute, 3,000 per rev, 0.06 optimal load. 
Oops, forgot about rapid heights. So came in, adjusted my retract height and clearance height. That lifts those yellow lines up more to clear our fixture nut. Back at it. Making a nice chip. I really enjoy this. It, making a real chip like that, it's just very satisfying how cleanly it cuts. And the chips were turning just a dark brown color, which made me feel like we had a good recipe nailed down. And I really like using the quarter inch tools. We had a tiny bit of chatter and I still can't figure out why it happened. It was plenty secure and it only chattered in that sort of front right quadrant. And I'm almost wondering if I need to tighten up like the gibs on my machine or got something peculiar going on there. One of the reasons I think this was off is the cold roll moved on me, which I should know when we removed all that material. So even though I had the nut touching correctly, I should have indicated it in, that would have fixed it, lesson learned. Flip the part over, and because we flipped it over, I'm, I'm referencing off of the front plane now because I wanna keep the same edge because fun fact, cold rolled is actually slightly undersized, which is, we'll call it annoying. It's just one of those things where you've gotta know it to deal with it. And I wanna to try to, I'm not try, I want to keep uh, the same reference point of the features that we've already machined, like the pocket over here. This will be a hole for the handle, carry handle. We'll just tap it quarter 20. You wouldn't think I would ever run that without more work holding, right? Added a strap clamp in, worked great. Open up that pocket for holding the brass insert, which will hold whatever sort of micrometer we're using. And then a little touch of adding some logos on here, which I like, but stay tuned, we might actually get rid of these in lieu of something else. Anyone who's watched Tom's channel knows you don't dare make something uh, and not throw your name on it uh, and send it to him. And, and frankly, you should do that uh, anyway. Take pride in what you do. And I thought it'd be cool to put uh, the Ox Tools and the Saunders logo here. Lakeshore Carvide, 20 thou tip engraver. We love this tool. All the RPMs we got at one thou per tooth, four thou deep. Goofed on that, again, height problems, I realized afterwards. I actually put this part in an arbor press and was able to straighten it back out, but should have done that earlier in the game. Lesson learned. And the side holes for the link bar. Well, using a one, two, three block to clamp, uh, plenty rigid enough. Drilling it to letter B, or 236. Opening it up with a 3 16 end mill, using the boring operation at 250 service feet. Pretty slow, 7.7 .7 inches per minute, and going down at a 0.02 pitch. Little bit of chatter there. More importantly, we're using the same tool to open up the pocket. I wouldn't call this complex, but there's a lot going on here. We've got the air clearance area for the socket head cap screw head, a clearance hole here, and then the tapped hole on the underside. So what I do, by making that plane first, I can now spot it a flat area, drill it through with a tap size drill, and then chase it back out only to the lower height here with the clearance drill. So spot, drill all the way through, and then open up the top hole. So what we learned, indicators are your friend. I need to have one next to each machine because it's when the indicator's in your toolbox and you, and you don't feel like walking over and pulling it out and putting it on the Noga, then that's when you think, I'll wing it. When it's right there, you don't mind putting it on there. And I know better, cold rolled moves on you. Why? When it's cold rolled, it's rolled in a cold state and it has a lot of built up stresses. And as we machine a significant portion of that away, it causes those stresses to change and the steel always will move on you. The one exception, sort of, is if you have a piece of cold rolled and you take equal cuts on both sides, you may have less. There's good more that gets into grain structure. Easy answer here would have been to do a better job fixturing and measuring, or no reason we couldn't use a piece of hot rolled. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.